Thank you guys for joining us. Um, so we're, this is Esther, I want to introduce you. Um, she's an artist and illustrator and she also teaches in Seattle and she has spent um, the past few months creating a on, an online course that's focused on helping artists find their creative voice. So we're going to talk her experience. So to start out, can you talk about how long have you been an artist and illustrator? Yeah. Um, well, I feel like I've been artistic my whole life. Uh, you know, when I was younger, my parents really encouraged me to draw and um, explore different creative things. And um, so I've been doing that for a while. I got really into it in high school. And then I sort of left it for a while and um, got back into it in my 20s. And then I ended up going back to school um, for illustration um, in college. So. And then how did you get started with teaching? So once you got your illustration degree and you started working within illustration, what kind of drew you into the teaching world? Well, I was actually, so I was kind of, I was like two years out of school and um, I had been working in a corporate job at American Greetings and I ended up quitting and um, didn't, I was doing freelance and I got this call from somebody um, who asked me if I would be interested in teaching an illustration class at Kent State because I was living in Ohio at the time and um, so I was like, I never thought about it. And once I started, once I did it and I was in the class, I just felt this sense of like, I should, this is like what I'm made to do. <laughs> I had this feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm like good at this and I enjoy it, you know, and the students seem to be getting a lot out of it. So it, it just felt like a really good fit. So. And now you're in Seattle and you, you teach there as well. Are you teaching mostly illustration there too? Yeah, so I teach at Cornish College of the Arts, um, and that's in Seattle downtown, and um, I teach mostly illustration, except this summer I'm teaching high schoolers graphic design, so. Oh, wow. I've taught all kinds Challenge. of graphic design, too, <laughs> yeah. I've taught all kinds of things, and then I also teach um, it, my creativity classes here at a little studio here. And what um, inspired you, so you created your first online course, and we're going to talk a little bit about it in a second, but what inspired you to start teaching online or to kind of create your own curriculum in a sense? Well, um, I have been teaching these creativity class, finding your creative voice classes um, for about a, year, a little over a year now um, here in Seattle. And I've gotten such a good response from them that um, people who were like not in Seattle, you know, um, have or on my newsletter list, they they were asking me if I could um, create an online course. And um, you know, I just really, I just feel like so many people. This can benefit so many people that I just wanted to get it out there and. Um, share it. It's a little bit different from my in-person class, um, but it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, so that was kind of my intention for yeah. putting it online. And then, can, so let's talk a little bit about how the course works or what's in, included, because, so I think it's cool, you took your offline class and then basically created kind of an online version. So can you talk a little bit about what um, the class is and what people do in the class and how it works? Sure, yeah. Um, so, <clears throat> so basically, um, the course is really, it's really what I wish I had when I was, um, starting out or kind of in this, um, time in my life where I was trying to figure out who I was as an artist. It's the course that I wish I had during that time. Um, and so, you know, we spend so much of our time, um, in our heads as adults and as artists, um, or people who are starting out or even, you know, I was a, I was a full-time illustrator and I had like sort of this crisis, but 
we're always like looking at other artists or thinking about, oh, I should be doing this, I should be doing this. If you have a really strong um, inner critic like I do, um, it can be really hard to um, figure out who you are as an artist mm -hmm. um, and really get the sense of um, my art is coming from me from an intuitive place instead of like, oh, I should be doing this, I should be. I feel like there's a real disconnect, and I felt it myself as somebody who um, is like a people pleaser. <laughs> like, I want to do what people buy, or I want to make what my clients will like, you know. And so that sort of thinking really gets you out of uh, creativity in general. Like, it's really mm -hmm. horrible for just, like, a creative you wanting to create something that's purely yours um, and I think once you find something once you find that sense of yourself um, and you can tap into oh this is my style it's coming directly from me it feels so good you know it feels like oh, I'm creating something that is me it's fulfilling and then it also helps you stand out as an artist. So that's really what the course is about, um, helping you tap into more of your intuitive side rather than I should, I should, I should, which is like this kind of, uh, like it puts you in a box, you know. It freezes you, mind. yeah. Uh, and I see a lot of times when I'm looking at portfolios of artists who are just starting out or artists who are kind of trying to figure out what market to sell their work, I'll look at their portfolio and it'll be like 10 pieces of art that look nothing, like are just totally different projects, styles. And I'll be like, so like, which of these is kind of your style? And they're like, well, they're all client projects. And I did this one for a client and I kind of like this piece of it, but then they made me change it this way. And so none of the work that's on their site is actually representing kind of what they want to do, what kind of art they want to put out there. And always I'm like, you need to just like create, like you need to take time to create something just for you. And a lot of times when I tell artists to do that, they freeze. They're like, well, what, what should be? And yes. so I, that's why I was so kind of interested in your course and the position that you take on it, because I think that that is something where artists just get stuck of just creating, you know, from their heart. It's like, what does that mean? <laughs> exactly. And that's, where I was. That's why I sort of took this journey. So I, I'll just go into like <laughs> kind of why I created it. Um, so I had been, you know, um, I went to school for illustration and I went back to school when I was older. So I was like, I want to make money. Like I got to make, I want to do this. Like I was so a career determined. change. <laughs> I, w I had three internships, like different kinds of illustration. So I had like, and I was constantly like, what do people want? Like, I'm going to do that, you know, and like just, just constantly trying to figure out how to make money and um, how to make this a living. And I did it, you know, like I got clients like in school, out of school, like just, I was always working and um, and two like two or three years out of school, I was burnt out. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I don't want to do this. Like, I don't want to even drop. So I got a full time job, which hate, <laughs> hated it <laughs> as, a, as a designer, creative director. And um, but I didn't do illustration for like two years, and um, I and I was like. I took this intuitive painting course from Flora Bali, and um, I love I loved painting. Right, that was like really it's really my soul. Like when I can paint, it's just it feels so good to me. But whenever I would start painting, or even with clients, like when I would start a project, I would get like so tightened up. Like, what should I be doing? I don't know. Like, I don't know what to I don't know what to paint. You know, I would just get frozen. Right. And with this like fear that I should be doing it a certain way. And um, so I took this intuitive painting class and it was just like, oh, I started painting these things that were just, they felt like me for the first time, you know, in a really long time. And, um, and then I had this creative coach who was also, that's what she told me. She said, you know, get a sketchbook because I was so all over the place. She's like, what 
what do you want to do? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. So, yeah. um, <laughs> so she's like, get a sketchbook and just like draw in your sketchbook every day. And so that's what I did. And I, um, I started doing some of these intuitive exercises, like intuitive drawing that Flora does. Um, and I started get, gathering all these resources, these creative resources, like Linda Berry, all these different, um, where they do all these different exercises. And um, I found in my sketchbook that there was a style. It was like the style that was coming through. And it was my, it was for me, you know, it was like these. Right doodles and you know colors that I actually you know lot liked those are those were coming from me um right so yeah I saw this style emerge and I was like oh man this is really powerful you know so right. um <laughs> and I think I see that too like with artists who anytime I find an artist who has built their career or a full-time career or is like on the verge of it you can look at any of their work and like you can see them in it in a sense like it's just like you can identify their style and a lot of times artists are like how do i get there like how do i get to that place and it is like you have to create a lot of artwork and you have to lay it all out and you have to figure out like you know what is it that's shining through and it and it is just that process of like creating for yourself which is you know really mm -hmm. scary um and i want to tell everyone we are going to have a few minutes for questions if you guys have any questions for us or about um, finding your voice or illustration or anything, feel free to type those in the chat room. Um, and then I want you to talk a little bit um, about kind of the, the project you do in this course and kind of how the, the process you take people through that kind of helps them develop their style or kind of figure out their voice. Yeah, so we, um, we work in a sketchbook um, because, you know, that's, I, um, I feel like, you know, your sketchbook, it's just for you, you know, you don't have to share it with anybody. It's just a place where you can play and explore. So um, we, use, we use a sketchbook. I do a lot of intuitive exercises, like intuitive drawing, um, writing, things like that, like journaling things. get you into a place where you are, um, I don't know if you've ever heard of John Cleese, but he's an actor, um, Monty Python <laughs> fame, but he talks a lot about creativity and he talks about you really need to be in the state called open mode. And so many times we, you need open mode and closed mode, which closed mode is like where you critique yourself. So, so many times like we get straight to cr closed mode and critiquing <laughs> ourselves. But, so like, it's all about like, kind of, I try to veer you over to the side of open mode, like throughout the whole course. So there's a lot of like um, intuitive exercises where you're spending a lot of time really like getting to know who you are as an artist. So like going back to yourself like as a kid, right? So we're doing intuitive drawing um, collages where you're just like intuitively picking out things that resonate with you. And it's really amazing. It's really cool. Like in my class, um, in my in-person class, um, we do these collages and everybody's different and everybody has like a unique you know, look to them. And then at the end, when we have the final project, we put them side by side and they're so similar a lot of times. Like the style, your style is similar, you know? So, um, so we do like these, collages um, then I kind of um, we do a little like field trip where you're uh, gathering inspiration so you go from play um, to you know um, gathering inspiration so you're gathering all of these images that you just are naturally drawn to um, and then we use those for your final project um, and so we take time, so we're using uh, watercolor pencils, which are super fun and easy to use in your sketchbook. So, um, so I go through just sort of like, how can you play with experimenting? You know, kids, when they're kids and they have like a new marker or something, they're just like, oh, this is what it does. It does this and it does this. And they try yeah. all these different things and that's how they learn, you know? So I want to like us to get back to that sense of like, it's, you're not going to make a mistake, you know, like it's just your sketchbook. You're, you're just seeing what the materials do, right? So getting back to that place. And then I take you through um, 
this sort of like brainstorm process. So, um, how just for a second. We... Is, is everyone, can you see? Okay, I see someone's frozen, but um, mine appears to be working fine. It might be your internet connection. If anyone else could type in the chat and let us know if you can hear. Okay, um, so yes, it's your internet connection, but the video will be um, clear. Sorry about that. <laughs> Yeah, so, um, and then and sort of like brainstorming to create a final piece and in and getting um, not only external inspiration, but internal inspiration. So what are the things that are meaningful to you? You know, and we do like this um, intuitive writing, um, free writing, which really gets to the core of some of that. So you're kind of bringing those together in a final product. So I show you how can you create a more intuitive final product and then how can you, or final project based on everything that you've gathered. So you have yeah. like this um, gallery sort of of things that inspire you that you can draw from. And then, um, and then how can you create a more, um, uh, I don't know how you would say like a more finished piece going through like sketches and things like that um, and thinking a little bit more bringing a little bit more of your logical mind into it um, yeah. at the end yeah and I, so. I think I think the process of just like having a sketchbook and getting into the process of using it is such a great tool and it's something that like people think like of course I should have a sketchbook but like you forget and I just think of this example there's um, a blogger the blog Jenny from the blog ass and she wrote a New York Times best-selling book and she's this incredible writer and last year she was going through a depression she bought a sketchbook and like every day she would sketch and out of it came these amazing illustrations. And like, she's not an artist or an illustrator. She was just drawing like her feelings. And she got a coloring, like a coloring book activity book deal. And like, they took all of her sketchbook illustrations and published them. And so a lot of times when you just give yourself space to create, the things that come out are going to be so unique and like, so like part of kind of who you are and like you, you know your unique creation that that will stand out in the market when you go to sell yes. those and I and I've talked to um, Bonnie Faulkner from um, Going Home to Roost and she is an amazing surface pattern designer and she said she spent a year just creating for fun and through that is some of the most incredible work that she's done in her whole career because you know it was total freedom and I see here Kimberly said like would you explain intuitive writing or drawing and I think that's kind of it of like, you know, just drawing whatever, you know, you can think of or or finding the things that inspire you and finding different ways to draw them and giving yourself space to create. And that's why I think so great about this class is you kind of give the structure of like, here's how to kind of tap into that, but then also the freedom to then kind of explore um, your voice as an artist and kind of the things that you want to create personally. Yeah, I just feel like it's such a great resource for people who are wanting to, you know, create from that authentic self. Because like you said, that authentic, authentic art that comes from, you know, your true self, um, that's the thing that people connect with, you know. And it's there's something there that's like true and honest that people really are drawn to. Um, more than if you're like, oh, what should I draw? Uh, okay, I'll draw a horse because I feel like I need to, like, everyone's drawing a horse, like, or I right. draw it this way, you know, exactly. I mean, that just feels so forced. And, um, yeah, if I, I really honestly believe that everybody's creative. I honestly believe that every single person has a uniqueness to them and a unique style. I don't know where it comes from, honestly. I draw the same way that I drew in junior high and high school. It's weird. Like when I look back at it, at my drawings, um, but everybody has this like, you know, colors that you're drawn to, patterns, um, things that interest you. And so, yeah, if you can really tap into that, it's powerful. And I, I think it's similar to writing. And I had this coach that told me one time, like, Whenever you're writing something, you know, you start writing and like 
if you write three pages, the first page is just crap that you had to get out of your brain to get to the good yeah. stuff. And so a lot of like finding your voice as an artist, I think is sketching a bunch of stuff and like making mistakes and like drawing just stuff that sucks and like to get to the good part. But it's like, no one wants to do that. You don't want to write down the stuff that's not that good or draw it. And so I think, you know, allowing yourself the freedom to kind of make mistakes and to experiment with things and to explore, like, that's how you get to the really good stuff is being willing to kind of take those risks. Yeah. So intuitive drawing is um, a process where it's kind of like doodling. You just kind of like get into your body. Um, and really, you know, take a deep breath, um, take a pen or pencil, and I like to put on music, just put on a song that you, your favorite song, and then, um, you know, just let your body tell you and your intuitive sense tell you what to draw. So you're just kind of like doodling and drawing and see what comes out, you know, those are the things, that's why I, I don't want to tell people, oh, just go out and find inspiration, because you have things that your body wants to, like, naturally get out, like, you have these patterns, lines, things that naturally come out of you, I don't know where they come from, <laughs> but, like, intuitive drawing is just a way of accessing that, um, and, so yeah, so I we kind of like I try to get you to do that like every day so you can get this sense of like trusting yourself a little bit because I really honestly I don't think there's any mistakes in art. That's a quote from somebody, an artist, Matisse or somebody. But like there aren't any mistakes in art. Like you, all of the stuff in your sketchbook could be used for something, whether it's bringing it to the next level or. Um, taking elements of that and bringing it, some, or maybe they aren't used, you know, it just feels good. Oh, I'm here, just paused. No, and I, I think that that's such a great point. I all, So I'm like not an art, like I just don't draw or anything, but I always, when I'm talking to people or I'm on phone calls, which is all the time, I like just have to be moving my hands. So I'll have markers and I'll just scribble. And it's literally like by the end, just like lines, 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 arrows, squares, lines, but it's always the same, like the same yeah. shapes, like, and it's just that motion. And so it's yeah. funny you say like, there are just, you know, things in you or movements that you need to get out. And I think that a lot of times it's like subconscious. And so it's hard to kind of put your finger on what that is. Um, but just giving yourself space to do that. Uh, so we're going to wrap up here in a minute, but I wanted to, we have a few things um, to share with you guys. So Esther has this amazing newsletter that I'm going to put a link here. Um, she sends out once a week and she sent me like her back issues and like each one is like a treasure. Like there's like creative ideas and she has projects and she tells stories and like she puts so much time into writing these incredible newsletters that definitely subscribe and also check out the past issues because um, it's really good content. Um, and you guys can also follow Esther here on Instagram um, if you wanna follow her work there. And then we're all, we have a discount code if you guys are interested in signing up for Esther's course. It's available on demand, so as soon as you sign up, you get access to all of the videos. Um, and so you can get all the details there through that link. And if you use the discount code, I think it's just Modern Thrive. Yeah, if you use the discount code Modern Thrive, then you'll get access to the entire thing for $99, and you can work through it um, on your own time. And Esther did all the videos in her studio in Seattle, and they're all, like, professionally recorded, and um, am it's amazing content. So I highly encourage you to check that out um, and take some time just to set aside to explore um, your voice and, you know, experiment with new mediums and kind of find your style because you all have it inside of you. It's just a matter of taking time and finding and then taking your style and figuring out how you can turn that into a career or a business. And all of you can do it. Um, so don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions. And thank you all for joining us. And thank you, Esther, for taking time to chat with us today. This was a lot of fun. Yeah, and definitely sign up for my newsletter because we're going to be doing some shorter classes too um, in the few next coming months. So thank you so much. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a great afternoon.